Can anyone hear me? Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, so good afternoon, my name is John Fernandez. I am a thermal engineer in Facebook's hardware engineering team. And today I'd like to talk about some updates in the door heat exchanger track under the OCP ACS. Specifically talking about some of the concepts that have been discussed within the community. Some of them have been contributed by the community as well as the current status of the specification document that was initiated in January, which is very much a work in progress. So to give an, an overview of the ACS group uh, within OCP, um, so in the second half of last year, the ACS group met with a bunch of community members to talk about how advanced cooling how advanced cooling solutions could be enabled for both open rack and 19 inch architectures or EIA 310. The driving factor, were, there were a bunch of driving factors, some of which were uh, the increasing trend in power densities and how can advanced cooling solutions help uh, sort of track those advancements. And also, if you're going to enable advanced cooling solutions within your facility, how do you define or standardize a lot of the interfaces that would be required to implement the same? So, like I said, the, it involves standardization or definition of critical interfaces, um, operational parameters, whether it's air side or liquid side, and also environmental conditions. But the overlying goal also involves, like um, Cam has stated from, from Coolit, or Hussam and Brandon from Microsoft, it's very important that this initiative enables a multi-source environment um, and also non-proprietary designs that can be easily adopted by different members of the community. So advanced cooling is a fairly broad term um, and based on discussions with the community, uh, three separate architectures were highlighted, specifically the cold plate track, the immersion track that Rolf just spoke about, and also the door heat exchanger track. Um, of course, across these different areas, there are, there are lots of components or lots of um, systems that can be leveraged between areas. So it's very important for us to have architecture harmonization uh, for consistency uh, from a material standpoint and also from, like I said before, interfaces to the data center. With the door heat exchanger work stream, um, certain areas were highlighted as in-scope activities. Fluid physical properties and types, uh, what sort of um, heat exchange materials can be employed. Uh, operational conditions and parameters, um, once again talking about, because this is a door heat exchanger, which is effectively, could either be a liquid to air or air to liquid interface. Uh, it's important to highlight both the, the air side operating parameters as well as the fluid side operating parameters. Um, the door heat exchanger itself is a complete solution. Um, so how do we define different levels of performance for such a solution? So we need to establish a metrology for heat extraction performance. And the door heat exchanger to a lot of the community uh, may seem as um, a sort of single application, but there are different ways in which this solution could be employed. And um, these are going to be discussed during today's presentation and involves how the data center is set up. If you have facility water, you could go with a more traditional approach or a more advanced approach. But if your data center is already employing free air cooling, then there may be an opportunity to plug in the gap between the limitations of air cooling as well as going to a primarily facility water solution. So talking about potential solutions, um, these have been categorized based on the data center design. As I stated previously, if you have facility water, you could go with a more traditional approach, which over here is highlighted as hot air to cool liquid with the door heat exchanger mounted at the rear. The other is you could be a little more advanced. Uh, you could um, use cold plates to cool a lot of the high power components that are in the servers themselves, while also attempting to make the entire rack itself neutral to the room. The other is free air cooling. Um, if we modify the previous approach a little bit, which is uh, 
We want advanced cooling at the components, but at the end of the day, we still have to reject the heat to the facility air, then um, there is a solution or there is a potential solution for doing what we refer to as hot liquid to cool air. So very quick overview of the different types of solutions. When you have facility water available, the first approach is the most traditional or the most widespread approach of a door heat exchanger solution, which is you attempt to make the rack itself neutral to the room. There are advantages with this approach. Obviously, you don't need containment. You can put the racks wherever fluid is available and so on and so forth. And this diagram over here highlights that solution where you have air coming into the IT gear and the air is responsible for cooling 100% of the components within the IT, resulting in hot air being exhausted by those components. And then the door heat exchanger capturing most, if not more, of that heat and then making the, the rack effectively neutral to the room. Of course, in this case, you need to have facility-side liquid connections to enable that. So how is it possible to do even more advanced cooling in this case? Um, here, the solution highlights what we call as hot liquid and hot air to cool liquid. Like I stated before, um, this would involve some sort of cooling infrastructure within the rack itself, whether it's manifolds, but you would need cold plates on the really high power components that are responsible for absorbing a lot of the heat now the rest of the components will still be air cool and the door heat exchanger is responsible for rejecting that heat to the facility water. The third option is if your data center is designed for air cooling um, and you want to have a sort of interim solution between what's a traditional air cooling solution and a solution that wholly adopts facility water, you could take the previous example where I said, okay, you have certain infrastructure that's within the rack itself, whether it's manifolds at the rear or on the front, or cold plate solutions that are installed to high power components within the rack. You could, you could effectively use that solution to capture heat from those components, whereas the rest of the components are still air cooled. So, you have some of the heat, some proportion of the heat that is exhausted to the air that's flowing through the server, and then you use that air to cool down the fluid that is then recirculated back to the components, to the liquid cool components that are within the rack. And we refer to this as hot liquid to cool air. This slide over here just uh, provides a more um, clear rep representation of what this solution would look like. So, let me just, um. so over here we have um, a GPU chassis, um, Facebook's uh, big, ba uh, big basin unit. Uh, the cold plates are installed on the GPU components and are responsible for absorbing all the heat from those components. This hot liquid is then um, consolidated within a hot manifold which is then uh, pumped directly into the door heat exchanger, which is responsible for the primary hot liquid to cool air heat exchange. The door heat exchanger then connects with a coolant distribution unit that can be positioned anywhere within the rack and is responsible for driving the internal closed loop circuit. The CDU is also responsible for pressurizing the cold manifold for the return fluid back to the cold plate. And then through a rack revel interface or uh, through a manifold interface, this liquid is then returned back to the cold plate and the cycle continues. So I stated, as stated previously, the specification um, has been initialized in January. It's very much a work in progress, but we have highlighted certain areas uh, that need to be clearly defined for this door heat exchanger stream. So the first component is physical which is we define the, the maximum dimensions of the solution itself. What sort of interfaces should be defined, whether it's uh, the coolant interface, the power interface, as well as communication. We also define uh, 
Uh, we also hope to define a maximum weight specification for each of these components, uh, because at the end of the day, when these components are integrated to the rack, it should not impact the, the data center from rolling them into the space. The next is the data center environment. Um, depending on what type of solution you use, um, we're gonna talk about uh, the air side requirements as well as the, the liquid side requirements. Performance and metrology, uh, this is really critical. If someone wants to adopt this solution for their IT rack, they need to very clearly understand what is the solution capable of. So we define heat extraction or cooling capacity performance in kilowatts based on certain boundary conditions, as well as uh, other parameters in terms of how much cooling power is, is permitted based on a sort of active solution for the door heat exchanger. Monitoring and control, um, it's very critical for us to understand how the solution will operate in deployment. So we're talking about monitoring critical parameters, setting alarms based on certain um, readings that are made in production, as well as what type of control is required. Serviceability, um, the solution should definitely be designed or defined for ease of serviceability in deployment. Reliability and quality, once again, um, this solution should ensure long-term operation in deployment. And environmental and regulations, um, shock and vibe, um, labels and markings, regulations and compliance, so on and so forth. So to touch on, on a few topics um, that have been defined or are in the process of being defined in the specification, we have the physical side. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, the width and height of the door heat exchanger solution should fit within the primary rack frame structure. Now this does not include uh, components such as casters and leveling feet. And the only components in the door heat exchanger solution that are permitted to violate this volumetric are obviously connections to the facility or connections for power and for communication. We also define the maximum depth of the door heat exchanger solution to one feet or 105 millimeters. Um, and this applies to both active and passive versions. Um, sorry, I should have gone over this before. A door heat exchanger can either be a really dumb door heat exchanger without any air moving devices or an active version where fans are integrated with the door heat exchanger. The, the door heat exchanger should also come with a hinge solution that should permit opening of the door by at least 90 degrees. Now this is for ease of access to the rear of the rack or wherever you position the door heat exchanger. Uh, whether it's, uh, it's really important for us to have access for serviceability of the rack or the components within. And based on uh, the existing sizing, we recommend uh, an aisle size that's at least four feet. On the DC environment side, uh, we specify the air side conditions. Um, this is the supply air temperature to the, the inlet to the rack. In this case, we define the cold aisle temperature between 18 to 35 degrees Celsius. There's uh, a ramp rate to accommodate the operation of the data center. Uh, cold aisle pressurization is under the assumption that you have a BMS system that drives a pressure drop across the rack uh, with the presence of some form of containment. The relative humidity range, um, a, a very efficient way of doing air cooling in a data center is the use of free air cooling. Um, it's very hard to have a very tight control on the relative humidity range, so we define this range as such. The data center could be um, could be built in different regions, and as such, there are also implications of the altitude at which these systems need to operate. And over here, we defined a temperature difference across the IT rack as a reference to uh, the efficiency of the thermal operation of the IT gear. Now, of course, depending on who adopts this, um, this value is just provided as a reference. Uh, you could find some servers that may not meet this requirement or certain IT gear that could actually exceed this requirement. So the basis of defining this value uh, 
is so that it can be used as a reference by the solution providers to define how much heat extraction performance is actually capable. In terms of performance and metrology, um, the cooling capacity or the, heat ex uh, or the heat rejection capability of the solution will be defined in kilowatts, but is dependent on a bunch of parameters. How much airflow do you have through the heat exchanger? How much liquid flow do you have through it? So um, at a very high level, we have defined some of these parameters. Uh, for example, uh, reliability uh, is very important. So N plus one fan redundancy for the active operation is a must. Um, in order to not impact the IT gear that is within the rack, it's also important to make sure that this solution doesn't add too much back pressure um, to the equipment that's within the rack. So a general guidance is the face area of the heat exchanger within its supporting range, uh, frame should be maximized as much as possible. For people who want to, or end users who want to adopt this solution, performance curves should be provided. Um, obviously, we do not want the server fans within the IT gear to have to spin up too much to accommodate such a solution. So we're also pushing for um, a minimal or lower air side pressure drop uh, to, to minimize that sort of impact. For the active variant, um, a very usual control that's uh, integrated within the solution is to um, make it pressure drop neutral. But as such, the, the active solution, the fans have to consume power to, to maintain operating conditions. And as such, we have defined that the total power consumption of such an active solution should be less than or equal to 2% of the rated cooling capacity of the solution. And the actual performance of the door heat exchanger could be dependent on a number of parameters, but we have highlighted two areas here. One is uh, the fluid that's actually used in heat exchange, and the second is uh, where the door heat exchange will actually be deployed and operating. So deracting factors should be, should be provided to the customer based on the working fluid that's selected, as well as the altitude at which this solution will be working. So this point has been gone over by a lot of the, the previous presenters, but there's a real need for harmonization um, across the three different work streams, because there are a lot of common areas where we could leverage a lot of the definitions that already exist. As such, it's important for us to align with and leverage uh, a lot of the definitions that are being put forward by either the immersion area or the coal plate area. Um, these are interfaces to the facilities, um, the type of working fluids that can be deployed, uh, operational conditions and parameters, and quite importantly, hot plug drip dripless valves between the IT gear and the rack. So here are some of the planned milestones uh, for the door heat exchanger area. As stated previously, we have initialized the specification document, uh, or at least uh, a sort of high-level framework where we need to get more and more information defined. This was done in February. Uh, we, we are also eagerly uh, looking forward to input from the community in a lot of these areas, specifically um, solution vendors who already have a lot of experience in this area, as well as potential adopters who want specific types of connections or specific requirements from the solution itself. So as such, we, we are looking forward to uh, a lot of help or a lot of contribution in the areas of physical interfaces. How should we define performance and metrology? For example, how do you, how do you decide when you want to go from a passive solution to an active solution? Should we define a PQ curve and then compare that with the, with the capability of the IT gear and then establish a breakpoint where you could make a decision between going with a passive solution and an active solution. Serviceability, what's already been implemented in solutions that are already out there and how can we leverage a lot of that, as well as add requirements that may be com coming from a lot of the end customers. Reliability and quality, uh, what sort of testing needs to be done on an assembly before it can be shipped to an end customer? There, there are a lot of uh, specs that are out there that vary a lot, so it's important for us to very clearly define those requirements in here. And environmentals and regulations. 
And right now, our goal is to have a formal version by the OCP Regional Summit, which will be in Amsterdam in September of this year. So how to get involved? We have bi-weekly meetings like the rest of the work streams. Ours are on Thursday at 9 a.m. PST. Our next meeting is next week. Um, if, you have, uh, if you want more information, please feel free to reach out to either me or Jacob, who's the project lead. Um, and here are a bunch of links that you can use to get more involved in the ACS group itself, as well as to join the Door Heat Exchanger mailing list. Any questions? Right. I mean, uh, not just serviceability. Um, so ceiling will be really important in that case, right? Because you need to ensure that the fans that are on the active solution can overcome the pressure drop that's across the different IT gear. Also, um, it's definitely an area that we can look to explore, but um, there are different assumptions that go into it, right? Do you have a homogenous rack? Do you have a non-homogenous rack? A combination of compute and storage and so on and so forth. So. Um, I think to a short answer to that question, the ceiling is going to be really important in that case. But there are definitely cooling power consumption um, benefits to be had. So you take out the fans out of the server, you remove that power. You have much larger fans on the door heat exchanger, so they could be a lot more efficient. So. Anyone else? All right, thank you. Thank you.